Yo, what up? It's Aaron motherfucking Moses, and I'm answering a question from a comment that I got on my video called My Visit to Pettyville. And this comment comes from the homie Rusty Shackelford. What's up? Shout out to uh to Arlen, Texas. The comment is Can you make a video on narcissistic abuse? in codependency or addicts and enablers all right disclaimer Aaron Moses is not a mother is not a doctor all right I'm not a doctor I don't profess to be anybody who has mastered the the, the world of of um the psyche all right I'm not gonna tell you that I've I've done that I haven't all I can do is speak from my reality my views all right, I've dealt with hella different type of people. I've been in romantic relationships with two people that have been borderline personality disorder diagnosed. All right. And before they even have revealed to me that they were borderline personality disorder diagnosed, I already self-diagnosed them because I have written papers and taken classes for students who come from that world i've already read the dsm four through six and i already am, am kind of up on my shit my best friend has been a psychopath liz's brother is a psychopath and mm, my homie was a psychopath and one of my best friends was a sociopath um to, just to give you a little background of my observation. Alright, so first, narcissistic abuse. For all of these, I'm going to cover pretty much, I want you to apply a lot of these things. Alright, so firstly, you have to understand that you can't teach somebody empathy. You cannot teach somebody how to feel with healthy, the definition of healthy people feel. Unless they are a child, unless they are under the a, a certain age, I'm not even gonna give you an age. You know, it's illegal to diagnose a child to their face or to their parents as being a psychopath or a or a sociopath for a reason. You can't diagnose a child with that. You can only tell them that they are a psycho or a sociopath if they are over the age of 17. All right, legally. All right. So next. Just giving you that piece of information, these people have been put in a place where they are made to be responsible for what they are not responsible for. And I've already made a video on that. What that means is if you are 400 pounds because your mother is, a, is addicted to food, and she thinks that that is the lifestyle that you need to fucking indulge in. And you wake up and you are 19 years old and you're like, damn, I'm 400 pounds. I'm only 5'11". I'm 400 pounds. And this is the only life that I know. I only know to drink grease salads out of a straw in a blender. You only know certain eating habits. You can blame it on your mom and your genetics and cry yourself to sleep every day. Or you can stop the behaviors that you've been taught. Something that is a habit, something that's a lifestyle, something that's a belief system for you. And you can make the you can make the conscious changes to not be 400 pounds and eat at fucking McDonald's every day. You can do that. Okay, if you've been raped and you hate men and you're a woman, you can make the conscious choice, hey, you look, I've been raped when I was 12, I lost my virginity to a rapist, and I cut myself, and I do all these crazy things, I join the gang, and blah, blah, blah. That's not, you're not responsible for you getting raped. You're not responsible for you hating men. You're not responsible for the behaviors that you exhibit, but at the same time, you have the choice to not do these things anymore. You cannot 
teach that to somebody if they are not open to that if they can't empathize with people if they don't understand why they should not kill animals and cut them open to see how their organs work you can't do that okay that's simply not what you can do if you are not a fucking doctor all right so if you're gonna deal with these people if you're in a relationship with them and it's romantic and or even as even if it's non-romantic and it's non-sexual it's totally platonic and you have the choice they're not your family even if they are your family but it's somebody that you don't have to fucking see every day get out that relationship bro it's no reason that you should be facing these challenges so fuck that i don't care if she has the best pussy in the world if she has the best head in the world if you're a woman and this nigga has the best dick in the world it doesn't there's no love you're never going to receive the love that you deserve you're never going to receive any love you're only going to be an object at the end of the day because sociopath and you said you said narcissists but a lot of sociopaths and psychopaths identify with uh narcissism okay so if you are going to deal with that person you have to get out all right it's no reason that you should be dealing with this you don't love them you love the idea of them. They don't love you. They see you as an object. They don't see you as a person. They don't see you as somebody who has a real soul. They view plants and animals way higher than you every time. Okay, somebody who has been in two relationships with borderline personality disorder diagnosed women. Trust. All right? Trust me. Trust me. Ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies. All right? If you're going to, you're going to have to be a master of a motherfucking disaster. What does that mean, Aaron Moses? I know how to put this shit together. I'm really good at organizing shit. I read the 48 Laws of Power, and I have been doing a lot of that shit just off the strength of me being alive, just off my genetics, just off of how I was raised, just off of just how I operate with stuff. All right. If you want to fight, you have to pl you have to play the player. You have to know the game. All right. The world is ATM. And what's the PIN? The PIN is GAME. -E. Damn. All right. So if you want to know, if you want to know how to how to twerk these motherfuckers, if you want to know how to work with these people, just like the homie Lowe said, shout out to Lowe, bro. A-T-L-A-N-T-A. -A -A. You have to play these people's games backwards you have to know thy enemy one thing a sociopath is really not good at doing is what uh pause take a sip from the bacotti bacotti b kodak yellow whatever sociopaths are not very good psychopaths excuse me good at giving their opinion on things they will give you their little facts they're fun facts they're western dictionary shit psychopath a lot of psychopaths a lot of sociopaths are very intelligent according to what the western society uh defines as intelligent they can soak up knowledge they memorize this shit and they are low-key geniuses sometimes why do i say low-key geniuses because because genius break the word down genius literally means information from the genes information from the blood something that you don't have to think about if i say one plus one and you see two closing your eyes if i say uh the square root of 144 minus x minus y square root of this and uh to the 17th power divided by seven and you clearly see 21 you're a genius okay if i say any equation and you can close your eyes and see it you're a genius all right that's what that means a lot of these motherfuckers aren't really geniuses they just are psycho sociopaths one of the two and they've stayed in their room they got their asses beat so they stayed in their room they read the whole encyclopedia on some fucking powder type shit shout out to the movie powder watch that and that's how they operate they cannot give you their opinion on shit if you say hey um, why do you think the cemetery is built like this? And they say, you know what? Actually, the cemetery, uh, 99% of cemeteries in America are surrounded with iron, pure iron, uh, bars because, uh, in spirituality, spirits can't pass, uh, iron because it has the vibration of this and, and iron is from, is indigenous to this. And you'd be like, all right, 
cool, bro. But what is your opinion on the Jay Z album Four 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 compared to College Dropout Kanye West? And they will make a sad ass face. Okay, don't ask them, hey, why do you like uh, the color blue over the color red? Well, um, actually, my personality is like this. I have personality A, uh, and uh, according to personality A in the DSM-4, uh, you know, I have a cold personality. And what happens is, with that, uh, the word like actually means identify with. So I actually identify with the color blue. Like, bro, that's not what I asked you, bro. Ask these motherfuckers. You have to find the crack in the armor. And one way you can do this is, of course, by reading. But another way that you can do this is by playing chess. And I encourage two things in the gangers, in the bang gangers. M meditate and play chess. If you don't do anything with your life, bro. God's protect my life. If you don't do anything with your life, I'm telling you. Meditation. Focus. Focus. Be a man. The word meditate means man. The word man means meditate. Hold on, I gotta take this call real quick. Focus because all problems can be solved with meditation and focus. Talk to your subconscious mind and play chess. Because chess is the ultimate game of strategy. And strategy is all we need in this life. Hello? He's in Arizona. He's in Arizona trying to pick this up, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, they just sent it. Do you want the uh, number? Yeah, screen, uh, not screenshot. Send me the, send me a picture of the number of all of everything. Right. Your information. Yeah. All right, peace. But you have to know these people's weaknesses. When I play chess, I set up my defense. I put my rook to. I mean, not my rook. The pawn. I put my pawn two spaces up, then I set up a diagonal, then I put my knight, and then I put my other knight, and then I take my bishop, whatever color the bishop is, I put the bishop directly in front of the king. Why? Because that throws the player off, because they were not planning on making any moves outside of the defensive moves that they were planning on making in the future. So if you make motherfuckers react when they were not planning on reacting, then you have your win. All right, you gotta fucking, if a motherfucker's crazy, you gotta play crazy. You know, you gotta do, I'm, sh shout out to, shout out to police killers, but you have to do, what the police do, bro? How do the police catch criminals? They don't. They make other people catch criminals. They make other people do their job. The police, the best thing that the police... You know what good police work is? Making motherfuckers snitch on motherfuckers. Locking... You're trying to find a... You're trying to find a murderer or a bank robber. What do you do? You go to a little crack dealer. You go to a... a, a, a a nigga that's a, a little fake ass pimp. That's not a real pimp. That's not really giving these women G A M E and information pertaining to the occupation known as pimping and hoeing. You go to a little fake ass pimp and say, Hey, hey Jenkins, we we seen you and we, we we hate your pimp ass. So you tell us we know that you've been pimping these sixteen year old girls out and you tell us who who robbed that bank. He said, Hey, all right, baby. Look, this is what I'm gonna do, you understand me? The, the the cat down the road, uh, you understand me? Uh, he 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 told me a little something, something, a little birdie. He put a little bug in my ear. Tell us what you know, or we're gonna take your little pimp ass to jail. That's that is good police work. Getting motherfuckers to snitch on people. The problem with police is, and this is all, this is all. Listen to all this. This is all tying into one message. The problem, the thing with police is, they. Good police work is getting people to do your job, okay? Psychologically fucking with people to make people do your job, all right? The thing about police that fucks them up is that they are exposed to so many criminals. 
so many psychopaths, so many rapists, so many murderers, so many child molesters, so many bank robbers, so many people that pimp out their own sister, so many, so many people that rape their mothers and throw them off the top of the project buildings, so many people that dance with the devil, Immortal Technique, look, look that song up, so many people that do these things that they start to inherit these things, they start to inherit these traits and they go sour, fun fact of the day, Fucking uh, Chicago Police Department, Illinois police had the highest rate for alcoholism and suicide more than white women who white women has the high, excuse me, let me slow down. White women have the highest rate of suicide in the country. Illinois police actually beat white women in Illinois for suicide and predisposition to alcoholism. Why? Because they are fucking with elements that the the normal human brain is not meant to interact with these are psychological fucking difficulties these are psychological sicknesses illnesses and 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 um and and, and so I'm, I'm not even gonna i'm not gonna search for that fucked upness uh! new word the faculty is actually not a word either. But <laughs> you get what I'm saying, bro. If you're gonna interact with these energies, you're gonna you're going to have to conform to their ways. You're gonna have to play the player. You're going to have to play crazy. You're gonna have to get on their level. You're gonna have to succumb and lower yourselves to the to the to the devilishness, to the evil, to the psychoness. To the cycles, to the belief systems, to the habits. If you wanna if you want if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and you wanna catch a duck, you're gonna have to look like a duck and, and quack like a duck as well. That's what I'm saying. So you might as well not even be in that situation because you might even fucking wake up one day and be a psychopath or a sociopath. Going to prison, PTSD for going to prison is you are a good person. Uh you're 18, 19 years old, and you know one of the big homies. Let's say you're from, you're from, South Side of Chicago. Let's say you're from Mesa, Arizona, and one of the big homies told you to hold some some meth and some heroin, and he says, "Look, bro, you're you're 17, 18, bro. If I go to jail right now, this is my third strike. I'm going for life. They're gonna send you there for like a year, maybe year and a half, and you end up doing your little year, year and a half." PTSD means you being a sociopath or a psychopath when you come out of prison. Psych uh, uh, sociopathy and psychopathy is actually contagious, bro. You keep fucking with these motherfuckers. Narcissism, narcissism is contagious. All right. So the way to deal with narcissistic abuse is to not fuck with these motherfuckers. Is to either narcissist narcissism them back. Or to not fuck with these motherfuckers. Easy. Easy. Squeezy lemon be easy. Codependency. On the codependency level. You can teach a motherfucker to. You can teach somebody to love themselves. Loving themselves. Is a lot easier to teach somebody. Showing somebody. Look you don't see. Look you did that all by yourself. You didn't need me. You don't need to have. A thousand dating apps. You don't need to have Twitter and to what with Twitch and POF and Tinder and Bubble and Bumble and OK Cupid and 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 Kick. People are having anxiety and and depression because they can't connect with people because they don't have the ability to sexually and and romantically and platonically and friendship wise connect with people. You can teach people to be on their own. Why? Codependency is the equivalent of being afraid of the dark. You know how to test somebody for codependency? Pete, how do you test somebody for codependency? Codependency, like I just said, is the equivalent of being afraid of the dark. If somebody cannot sit in a room with you, you and them, and be silent... Time them. 30 seconds. A minute. Two minutes. Three minutes. Four minutes. Five minutes. Ten minutes. If they can't sit in a room with one other person and not 
make a conversation, then they are codependent. Now, on the slide, on the scale of that depends on who they are, what they've been through. But generally, if a person can't sit in a room with another person and be silent for more, if they can't do that for less than 30 seconds, then that is a that is a symptom of slight codependency all right and to put to sprinkle a little to sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper on the narcissism side a lot of narcissists a lot of sociopaths and a lot of psychopaths are actually on the scale of autism okay a lot of rapists a lot of people that are violent a lot of um psychopaths and sociopaths they might be geniuses but they a lot of violent offenders in america that are in prison are actually on the autism scale all right so the message here for all three of those things is that you have to fuck with people and you have to know your enemy you have to know your opponent i'm never going to call them your in your enemy but you have to know what you're dealing with every time if you somebody i'm not even going to say the motherfucker's name but if think about think about life like this bro this is your life. You're a mechanic. You're an engineer. You're a master mechanic. All right. You want to build the best car. This your life is the goal of building the best car. All right. I am Aaron Moses. I am the president of the world. All right. And I say, look, guy or madam, you are the best mechanic in the world. And what we are trying to do is I want to give you the task of building the best car i want you to take a lamborghini engine i want you to take audi brakes i want you to take the transmission of a jaguar i want you to take a ferrari this i want you to do this it's possible but how what knowledge do you have to connect the lamborghini engine to the ferrari this to the audi that to the mustang this to the what are you going to do with it, bro? It doesn't matter what I say to you. What are you going to do with it? All right. As far as enablers and drug addicts. A drug addict, their thing is pain, life, death, and the lack of being present. Okay. A drug addict, their drug is not drugs. Their drug is Houdini. Houdini complex. They don't want to be in the front. They don't want to be in the back. They want to be in the they want to be present. They don't want to look in the rear view mirror and they don't want to look too far ahead of them when they're driving. They want to be in the driver's seat. They want to know when to switch lanes. They want to know when the when the expressway is going to curve, they want to know when the stop signs are. You can't see the stop sign if you're looking in the rear view. You can't see the stop sign if you're looking three miles ahead. That's what a drug dealer's ticking point is. I mean, a drug, not a, a drug addict's ticking point is. As far as drug addicts, when you do drugs, drugs make you a psycho. Drugs make you a socio. Drugs make you narcissistic. So as far as dealing with that... You have to make motherfuckers, you have to still, you have to have your poison. And if you keep fucking with these motherfuckers, it's inevitable that you're going to inherit these traits, bro. As far as enablers, enablers ultimately are affected by the drug known as codependency. If you watch, and I'm getting this from, I'm getting this aspect from intervention as far, and as well as my own life, all right? Enablers... Their drug is a drug called codependency. You cannot tell me that you think it's a good idea to keep getting people money for their drugs and opportunities and cars for them to get high and you don't have some kind of sickness going on with you. All right. The codependent, the drug addict is dependent on the, co the enabler as much as the enabler is dependent on the drug addict then it the enabler draws its life force its value its purpose from the drug addict the enabler is depressed the enabler is as sick 
as the drug addict. Okay, the root of the problem, whether the nine times out of ten, if somebody's a drug addict, they've been molested or abused. Okay, 50 50 or a little bit of both. All right, neglect, abuse, sexual, physical, mental. The worst, the worst abuse is verbal. Okay, after verbal, the sexual, after sexual, is physical. The least, uh, the least uh, severe form of abuse is physical. I think it's, first is physical, which is the least, and then it's neglect. No, neglect, then sexual, then verbal. All right, verbal abuse is the worst form of abuse. And I'm thinking, you know, just like how the Bible says, just like how the Egyptians say, and a lot of the, uh, a lot of Genesis actually comes from Egyptian workings, the book of the dead. First, there was the word. God spoke. The magic is in your mouth. If you want to Google all of those things or look them up or ask a mentor, I feel like if that's the thing, somebody gets sexually abused, which is the third most severe uh, the second most severe form of abuse. What's more powerful than sex is the word. All right. I'm not going to tell you how to heal an addict. I'm not going to say that you need to speak the addict out of addiction. That's not a thing, bro. I'm Again, I'm not a doctor. All right. But dealing with addicts is, is, is something that is going to take them. You know, you're not going to kidnap a motherfucker and tell them that they need to change or whatever. If you try to, if you do like Chicago does, and Chicago knows what the fuck they're doing, you're sentencing drug addicts to rehab, you're not going to change the addict by forcing them to stop. Because that's just going to make it worse. You put somebody in jail for doing drugs, that's going to make it worse 90% of the time. I guarantee you. An addict is not going to stop doing drugs unless they are ready. If you see intervention, they break them the fuck down, they separate them from their ego, they separate them from their drug, and they say, look, bro, we're not going to force you to do this, but if you do want to do it, it's here. If you don't want to do it, go do your fucking drugs, we're not going to talk to you. But you have to, you have to give the presence of powerlessness you have to give the presence of death you have to put that in their fucking hands you have to give them the 42 48 laws of mods you have to put that in their palms or addiction is going to be present a hundred thousand percent of the time all right an addict is only going to make the choice to not be an addict when they are ready so if your girlfriend's an addict, if she sucks dicks, and she gives you chlamydia, and she smokes meths, and she gives you more chlamydias, and she gives you gonorrheas, and your mom fucks up all her money, and you have to handle her finances, they are not going to fucking stop doing that shit 100,000% of the time unless you give them a real, a real, real reason. Not according to them. Not according to you. According to them. Something addicts are the most selfish motherfuckers, bro. Somebody who has the most empathy in the fucking world. You give them some drugs, they will become narcissistic. They will become selfish. They will become a sociopath. They will become a psychopath. You want to make somebody a psychopath or a sociopath? You want to take somebody's heart away? Give them some fucking drugs and make them addicted to it. You want to take that addiction away? You have to give them their selves. You have to show them their own death. All right, but other than that, man, I'm pretty sure I answered all your fucking questions, bro. Uh, it's Aaron Moses again. I'm not a goddamn doctor, bro. Look at my, look at my hair, man. Look at my, look at my beard. Look what I did to my, look what I did to my beautiful beard. No, I'm not a doctor. Look at my, look at my hat. Look at my son. He doesn't even have on clothes. He's he's playing in the bucket right now. Look at him, like in the, like a third world little baby. <laughs> For five cents a day, you can buy Jimmy some real toys so he doesn't have to play with spray bottles and buckets. Ha <laughs> ha, little baby Jimmy. Look at him, he doesn't have to survive off of protein shakes. I'm just kidding, we feed him good, look, he's so fat. He's such a little, come here. You wanna get on camera? Come here. Jimmy, you almost made me make the mad face, nigga. 
Oh, that, yeah, that nigga's, that nigga's magically delicious, nigga. He's still looking, what did you just say? Did you just call me sexy in front of your friends again? That's a joke. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, man, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you overall were blessed from, from my words. I know if you're watching this video, you blessed me 100,000%. A lot more than you think. A lot more than you believe. But we have to put no. each other in the habit of being blessed and blessing each other. As my son eats crackers from the floor. Floor cracker. Floor cracker eating head ass. <gasps> what happened to the TV? What happened to the TV? Because uh, I just... Oh, no, 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 no,